This video is sponsored by the After Effects World Conference. Join us for three full days of cutting edge training sessions, including a trip to Adobe headquarters in Seattle with the founders and designers of Adobe After Effects. The conference will take place between September 27th to 29th, 2013 in Seattle, Washington. Visit us at aftereffectsworld.com. Hey everyone, this is John from Motionworks back with another After Effects tutorial for you. Now, After Effects CC has been out for a little while now and it has a bunch of really great new features including Cinema 4D Lite being bundled, the Cineware effect which makes working with Cinema 4D and Cinema 4D Lite so much easier. There are a lot of other smaller features in there which are still very, very useful. So I thought in this tutorial I'd just show you some of the things that I've been using recently in After Effects CC that have improved my workflow and made it just that much easier to work in After Effects. All right, so we're going to be jumping through these fairly quickly. A lot of them are quite small, but still quite useful. First of all, let's talk about Shift Parenting. Now, Shift Parenting was introduced into After Effects CS6. And basically what that means is if I parent a layer to another layer, holding down the Shift key, then that layer's anchor point will snap to the parent's anchor point. But have a look here. In After Effects CC, even with animation keyframes, those animation keyframes are maintained when you shift parent. So if I shift parent this shape layer to this logo, you can see it snaps to the anchor point and the keyframes for position are maintained. So that's brand new in After Effects CC, which is very useful. Next under the file menu, under dependencies, you can see we have three new options, find missing effects, find missing fonts and find missing footage. If you choose one of these, that'll put the text here into the search field inside the project panel and any comps with any missing fonts will appear in the list here. You can also type it in, missing effects, and you'll get the same thing and also for missing footage. Okay, this is one I really like. You can now use Brainstorm on gradient colors. I've got a shape layer here and I've got some text with the gradient layer style applied. Come down and click on colors. And for the shape layer, I'm going to command click on its colors option. Then click on the brainstorm button. And I'm just going to make the randomness 100%. Watch what happens when I brainstorm. The gradients for both of these are brainstormed. Okay, so that's just a new option to be able to add the gradient colors to Brainstorm. Could be handy when you're in a pinch, just need to come up with some different styles quickly. Now, while we're talking about gradients, let's just go over and have a look at the ramp effect because it's not called the ramp effect anymore, it's called the gradient ramp. I just type that into the effects and presets panel. It's now called gradient ramp. Just makes it easier to find, I think, because obviously it's a gradient. And what we also have here, let me just turn off the layer styles for this first. And just set these start and end points. What we also have finally is a swap colors button. So previously, if you wanted to swap these two colors, you had to do the long way, but now you can just click swap colors and that will switch the colors. So a handy new feature in the newly named gradient ramp. Okay, let's go across to the render queue, jumping around here. Inside the render queue, if I go into output modules, you can see here down the bottom for audio output, there's a new auto option. I don't know about you, but um, I think you're probably in the same boat as me. Often when I was rendering out a composition with audio, I would forget to set this to audio output on. And of course I would render and I have no audio and I have to go through and render it again. What we have though now is an auto function and what that will do, it'll output the audio only if the composition has audio, which is really handy. If there isn't any audio in the composition, it won't render audio. Keep in mind that if you render 
audio output on and the comp doesn't have any audio, it still renders audio tracks, okay? If you enter audio output off, it won't render any audio tracks. So it's probably best to leave it as audio output auto and uh, that way you won't go wrong. And we're talking about audio, let's just go up to the preferences. Inside the general preferences, you'll find the new option to play sound when render finishes. So before After Effects CC, when the last render inside the render queue finished, you'd have a sound that played and you can now choose to turn that sound off by deselecting play sound when render finishes. And just underneath that, there's new options for how After Effects will work with double clicks. You can see here opening layers with double click. Use option to reverse. On footage layer, double click will open the layer panel or you can choose to have it open the source footage panel. And on a comp layer, you can have the source composition panel open on double click or the layer panel open. So it's nice to have those and set those to what works best for you. Okay, next under import, and this is very handy, you can see here there's an option for report missing frames. Now, previously in the past, After Effects, if you had a sequence that had missing frames, After Effects would tell you that there are one frame or two frames or three frames missing from this sequence. But now After Effects will tell you exactly which frames are missing, which in itself is fantastic. But you can also choose to switch off that report by deselecting report missing frames. Under output, you can see here we have an option to show deprecated formats in output module settings. H.264, MPEG-2 and WMV have all been removed from the render queue. And basically the new workflow is to just go directly to Adobe Media Encoder. And I'll show you a couple of new menu commands in a moment. But if you really needed to render H.264 or MPEG-2 or WMV directly from After Effects, you can come in here and click this on and you'll be able to do that. So show deprecated formats in output module settings is off by default. And in relation to that, if I come up to the composition menu, you can now choose to add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. And there's a shortcut, option command M or alt control M on Windows. You can also come to file and choose export, add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. So nice to be able to add files directly to the Adobe Media Encoder queue from the After Effects interface. But keep in mind also that you can drop the After Effects file if you're in the Finder or the Explorer directly into the Adobe Media Encoder window. Let's just come back to this composition here. Actually, this one here. And I'm just going to select my MotionWorks logo. And if I right click, I can choose now to reveal in Finder. Before After Effects CC, you would choose to reveal layer source in project. And then in the project panel, you would reveal in Finder. So that was a two-step process. But now you can reveal layers directly in the Finder or in Explorer if you're working on Windows by clicking on the layer in the Timeline panel and choosing Reveal in Finder. You can also go to Layer, Reveal in Finder, but I doubt I'd ever do that because I'd probably be down here in the Timeline panel and I'd be most likely to just right click and use the context menu. So reveal in Finder, saving more time in After Effects CC. While we're in the Timeline panel, another handy feature, if you come to the Panel menu, you can see there's an option here to close other Timeline panels. I think it closes up. This is really handy when you have lots and lots of compositions open. Just come here and choose Close Other Timeline Panels. Inside the Project Panel, let's just come back to this MotionWorks logo. Another thing I really like is the ability to replace a layer inside the Project Panel with a pre-comp. Really nice time saver. So if I choose Replace with Pre-comp, that replaces that layer inside of this Shift Parent composition with the pre-comp. Obviously, before this, if I'd have used this MotionWorks logo across multiple compositions and wanted to pre-compose it, it would have taken a lot more work. Let's come back up to Dependencies, File, Dependencies. I'm going to choose to Collect Files. I'm just going to save my project. A nice option inside the Collect Files dialog box 
is to reveal collected project in Finder when finished. And this is checked by default. Just another small time saver, which just makes your workflow a little bit faster. Back across here in the effects and presets panel, I like this little feature. I'm not sure how much I would use it. Um, if I was to type in say, hue and saturation, if I've typed in something and it reveals only that one thing inside of this panel, either a preset or an effect, I can just hit the enter key before I finish typing all of the words, all of the letters, and it will apply that to the layer. So it just saves me having to come down, select it, double click it or drag it. So just type it in and when you've revealed just that item, you can hit enter and that will apply that to the selected layers. Only downside is of course, first thing I typed was something like fast blur and fast gives me a whole bunch of presets and blurs. If I type in B-L-U-R, then I get two blurs. I get CC radial fast blur and fast blur. So it's only really gonna be useful for effects and presets that have unique names. Okay, last thing, very small thing, but something just to keep in mind. I like to use the mini flowchart a lot when I'm navigating through my compositions. And previously, you would press the shift key. Let's just pre-compose this layer again. So I have some nested compositions. Now, previously you would press the shift key and that would bring up the mini flowchart, but I'm pressing shift and nothing's happening. That's because that key has been changed to the tab key. So in After Effects CC, when you want to bring up the mini flowchart, don't use shift, use tab. And if you don't know how to use this, just tab it up, use the arrow keys to navigate to your composition, and then press the space bar to open that composition. You can also press shift escape to take you back to the previous composition. So some nice shortcuts there for you. Okay, so that's just some of the new smaller features in After Effects CC. Hopefully you've found that useful. Keep an eye on Motionworks. If you haven't been looking at our experiments, I suggest you do. I'm doing my own experiments very regularly and I'm learning a lot about After Effects, even after all these years of using After Effects, putting effects together that you never expect would work together and really having a lot of fun with these experiments. And a lot of you are joining in, which is fantastic. I know you're really getting a lot of value out of it. So if you haven't joined in the experiments, they're for After Effects and Cinema 4D, give it a go. It doesn't cost you anything. All you'll do is learn. Inside our store, we have Cinema 4D and After Effects products. One of the more recent additions is the brand new movie type light for Cinema 4D light, which ships with After Effects CC. So definitely check that out. And last but not least, it's September now. I'm doing this on September the 1st, this recording. The end of this month, we'll see the After Effects World Conference over in Seattle. And I'm very happy to say that I'll be presenting a few sessions. So if there's any possibility that you can come, I definitely recommend it. And I'd be very excited to see any of you that can make it at the conference. For now, this is John from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you again soon.